students, now that our uh, bluish gray paint has dried on our KT boundary at layer, I'm going to show you how a technique of how to pick paint up. Water is not only a medium of your watercolor to help it move around your paper, but also it helps to kind of act as an eraser. So I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in there. I'm going to kind of drag it on the edge of the bowl so I don't have a big drip. And everywhere that I have a crinoid, I'm going to simply apply that paint. We're going to let it set for a few minutes after we do all of them. Then you'll take your paper towel and you can probably just use your finger or just get a little bit of it. And the longer that that water sits there, the more paint it's going to pull off of the paper. So then I'm just going to go straight down, straight up. I'm not rubbing or scrubbing because that'll just uh, kind of kill the little uh, design that we have. And now, see the difference in the color? So go ahead and continue to do that. Students, now we are going to continue using our watercolors to now add color into the geological layer that our ammonites are embedded into. We're going to begin like we did yesterday, taking our paintbrush and kind of um, saturating and wetting the paints that we're going to be using. And today, those will be both yellow and brown. So first, of course, let's do yellow because it's the lightest of the color. I'm just going to pick up water and again drag it over that little paint pan. Same thing with our brown. This is allows that paint to soften. Next, we're going to add some color first to these ammonites. And we're going to use the same technique that we did yesterday using our wet on wet technique. However, now that this is kind of soaked in just a little bit, um, let's go ahead and create the color that we're going to be using for these ammonite specimens. We're going to use a little bit of yellow. So wet that brush, pick up a little bit of that yellow. Then move to your brown. It's primarily we're going to use the brown. The yellow actually is going to give this kind of rusty brown color a nice little sort of golden color. Now that we have our paint mixed up that we're going to use for it, we're going to take our paintbrush and fill in these ammonites where our wet on wet technique we're going to use will be at once you wet that area pick up your little bit of color spread it around that paint's going to go wherever that water is and it will not go out of that boundary with this technique Okay, students, now once you have each of these ammonites in uh, this wet on wet technique, we're going to do something a little bit different than we did with our others. We're going to take our little paper towel and we're just going to lay it down there and iron it over and lift up that color. Now we are ready to address the kind of the sedimentary clay-like rock that these ammonites are embedded into. And notice if you're having little drips around your paper, just be kind of careful of how vigorously you start adding stuff onto. We'll turn that into an ammonite later. 
Now let's take our paintbrush and this time we're going to use a wet on dry technique. We're going straight from our wet palette of paint to our paper that is dry. Now notice that this creates a darker, richer type of uh, intensity of color. The paint is going to go wherever your brush goes. You're able to see those brush strokes which helps us kind of develop a little bit of texture in and around our ammonites. Now, if you start getting on something, just get your paper towel and just gently kind of pick that up. Otherwise, let that kind of set and rest and kind of soak into the paper nice. Continue on and fill in this whole area that is around in this crevice around our ammonites with your wet on dry technique and then that will be about all you're going to be able to accomplish for today. So carry on and have fun.